everyone, and welcome to Let's Pod This. This is Andy Moore, and this week's episode is going to be a little bit different, both in content and format. This was the Oklahoma Teachers Walkout Week. Um, man, it's been a crazy week, and so for our episode this week, we wanted to talk to some of the folks that are involved, teachers and students and other advocates. Uh, and so the first part of the episode will be actually the audio from a Facebook Live that we did earlier today. Scott and I recorded with Scott Mitchell from Mitchell Talks. He does uh, News 9 and News on 6, a couple of segments there, political consultant and all-around wise guy. Uh, And so we recorded that at Camps 1910 today, uh, earlier this afternoon. So following that, uh, we'll do a little break, and then after the break, we'll come back and hear interviews from um, several people, um, some teachers, Josh Delosier and Amy Young, um, as well as Elizabeth Siddler from Generation Citizen, an education advocate who works with schools, and and then four high school seniors from Edmund Memorial High School that we visited with to get their impressions about the walkout as well. We hope you enjoy. And we're back. Camp slot. Look at this. It is Andy Moore and Scott Nelson. Hey, Doc. Hi, Andy. Hello. How are you, sir? We just decided we just feature you guys and say here's what we'll do we'll tweet out let's end this or something <laughs> along those lines good to have you both let's just pass this microphone right over here and start with andy good afternoon andy how are you hi scott thanks for uh, thanks for having us thanks. um we're gonna sit here and record our podcast as well um so if you listen to let's pod this you can catch that hopefully tomorrow if we get it out there uh, so we thought we'd go through a few things today, uh, maybe start with a brief summary of the week, um, talk about some of the rumors, some messaging issues, and then what happens next. So uh, this week, as everyone knows by now, has been the teacher walkout. Um, so this week's been the teacher walkout, and it's been an eventful week. I was there this morning and saw probably 25,000 people there yet again today. Um, Scott, what's your impression from the outside? You haven't been there this week. What's been what's been your impression from the outside? I mean, it seems like there's, there's just a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of enthusiasm from educators, from students, from parents. I've, I've really not heard anybody who feels like this has been, you know, uh, a negative experience or you know hasn't hasn't been a, hasn't been a good thing for for the state to go through. And it seems like it's getting more enthusiastic every day. From what I've seen, you know, the crowd was big on day one, it's bigger on day two. Lines keep getting bigger every day, so. You know, it, it doesn't seem like there's been really any kind of falling off uh, on the part of, you know, the, the protesters and demonstrators um, in terms of their you know, enthusiasm for what's, what they're pushing for. Yeah, I think I mean, any kind of big event is really difficult to organize, and it's gotten a little more organized every day. Um, great response from uh, capital employees. Um, I talked to some high school students earlier who really commended the highway patrol and how they've handled things up there. Um, I joke with them that I want their workout routine because those dudes are ripped. Um, and, uh, and so I think things have, have progressed well. Um, and while it, some of the logistics have been more organized, I'm not sure that all of the messaging has been organized coming out. Um, I know a lot of people are, are uncertain of what the end goal is, aside from just more funding. Do you have any sense about that? I mean, my, my sense is the same as yours, which is that it seems like it's been a little bit of a, a moving target. You know, um, legislators initially pushed for $812 million in funding for educators, I'm sorry, initially pushed for $812 million in funding um, for year one. The tax package that passed uh, last week House Bill 1010XX was about $475 million initially. Um, there was $50 million roughly uh, from the hotel motel tax built in there, came out towards the end of last week. And I think that $50 million coming out is really what pushed pushed the teachers to go ahead and walk off the job. I think this week it's not been real clear from day to day what it's going to take to get teachers back in the classrooms. We've seen a lot of talk about capital gains. We've seen a lot of talk about ball and dice. We've seen a lot of talk about online sales tax. Some people have mentioned income taxes. So I think, at least for me, kind of being on the outside looking in, not being an educator, I, I've been a little bit confused. Okay, what's, what are we pushing for? What's kind of the end game? 
Right, and I think, you know, um, so I think tomorrow we will hear some of these being heard. I think the Senate's going to hear Ball and Dice. I think they're going to hear the Amazon third-party tax. Um, I, they've been pretty clear. I know Eccles was very clear that we're not going to hear capital gains. And, and for me, as I've dug more into the numbers, I've seen that it is a pretty volatile funding source. And I think that is a valid concern. That, I mean, we bank a lot of our budget on the like, gas and other volatile funding sources, as opposed to things that are more stable, like income taxes that we've cut. Uh, and so I don't, I think it's, it could be bad policy to base something like teacher pay or education funding on a volatile source like that. Um, but I think if that's the case, then then both parties probably need to do a better job of articulating what that looks like moving forward, if that's viable, uh, viable funding source and how they could set it up in some kind of um, more stable fund. Right. And I think one of the other issues with, with capital gains, the capital gains deduction that I've heard about is, you know, the, the estimated revenue from capital gains is based off the number of people who actually claim the deduction. But if that benefit goes away, there may be investors who have capital gains that they choose not to realize. They choose not to sell that property. They choose not to cash in that stock. And if they don't do that, then whether the tax is there or not, the state doesn't collect revenue because there's no income. So, you know, I'm not part of OMES and I don't know exactly how they calculate these things, but one of the, my concerns has been, okay, yeah, it cost the state $120 million last year, but would that really be how much that comes in if you took this away? Right, and with things like the lottery that everyone thought was going to be the end-all, be-all funding source, we had estimates ranging from $300 million to $150 million, um, and in reality, the highest it has ever been is like $72 million. I think the average is in the upper 60s. Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny that perhaps if teachers were paid more, they might buy more lotto tickets, which could kick around us to more education funding. Um, so about messaging, we've also seen um, just in with so many groups, uh, and all of us think that we're witty in terms of hashtags, right. but I've had a hard time finding the hashtag for this event. You would think something so huge would have maybe one or two, but there's, I've seen OK Walk for Kids. Um, Okay, okay, walk for kids. I've seen uh, okay teacher walk out, support our teachers. I've seen, isn't there like a sooner teacher walk out or probably Oklahoma ed teacher walk out? Right. Um, I mean, there's at least five or six different hashtags that there's ongoing Twitter debates about which one's the, uh, the official hashtag of the walkout. And so maybe that is because um, there are multiple groups involved in trying to put this together. And it really is, I think, a coalition of education groups. But I think, um, so OEA is big. They boast about 20,000 members. Um, there are some national groups, um, AFT and some others that are here. Scott, do you feel like the messaging is getting lost in the forest of so many groups? I, I, I do, honestly. I, it's kind of hard to see, you know, is there any one group that kind of speaks to the teachers and my sense is that there's, that there's not? And I think that speaks to the fact that this really was was and remains a grassroots effort, which is great. I, mean, I think that's one of the best kind of political movements. These ones really from the bottom that comes up. But to be really maximally effective, at some point there has to be a little bit more cohesion. You know, and I don't know if it's because all these disparate groups don't agree or if it's because they have, you know, different demands or they just don't talk to each other. Um, but I, I wonder if maybe they could be a little bit more effective in pushing for some of the changes that they're advocating for if there was a little bit more integration. Right, that's definitely true. And there has been a, a fair share of rumors this yeah, week. True. Um, we just saw on Twitter right before we went live that uh, um, one of the news outlets was reporting that, I guess, OSBI has received three reports now of some kind of outside agitators or some kind of threats, I think. Um, but there's been rumors that, uh, you know, that uh, John Eccles' tires were slashed, that he dispelled um, rumors that they were cutting the water to the building so the teachers couldn't go to the bathroom in an effort to get him to go home, which I've said doesn't even make sense because there's a hundred right. toilets right outside that they could get. That's not a thing. Rumors about shutting off the air conditioning in the Capitol Rotunda. Capitol Rotunda has never had air conditioning. Um, that's not that's not something to try and get people out of the building. Right. Uh, it's just there's no air conditioning and it gets hot. There's right. a lot of people. And then uh, and then I mean really some of the rumors have been from both sides uh, that 
you know, there was uh, the governor or someone made a comment about uh, Antifa or Antifa, anti-fascist, yeah, right. which in that group I don't quite understand. I should do some research, but I think aren't we all anti-fascists? I mean, what's the opposite? Pro-fascists? I don't think so. Well, um, and I, the last thing I would say on that is I think it's important to point out two things. One, um, everything that I've seen on social media, everything... Um, that I've seen you know, reports from OSBI and OHP that secures the Capitol. The vast majority of demonstrators at the Capitol have been polite, they've yeah. been positive, and they've been really getting the message across in the way that they're supposed to. It is incredibly unfortunate that there are, even if it's only three or four, you know, if you're the person that these threats are being directed against, it, it doesn't matter if you're the only one or if there's a hundred, it's being directed against you. And so it's really unfortunate that anyone, whether they're from Oklahoma or from somewhere else, would, you know, kind of hijack hijack this for so, you know I, I spoke to a freshman senator this morning when I was up there uh, with my son and he said uh, he's a Republican and, is, and coming into office uh, last year he would have never thought that he would have voted for some of the things he's voted for but after getting there and reading some of the data and getting the information um, he felt like this there was clearly a, a deficit in education funding and he is proud for the votes he's taken and he while it's been difficult to get work done because it is noisy up there because teachers can chant, it's like a pep rally, um, but he uh, appreciated, I think as we do, the level of engagement that we've seen from teachers. So that's been this week, tomorrow's Friday, we expect the Senate to vote on ball and dies yep. and on the Amazon online sales tax, online sales tax not Amazon, the other ones. Um, so beyond that, what happens next. I will plug one thing real quick and then I'll let you talk about it next week. Uh, that tomorrow, Friday night at the Tower Theater at 5.30. Doors open at 5.30 um, and the program will start at 6. Uh, we are co-hosting uh, a really great event called the Walkout Rockout. We're going to have a bunch of uh, local Oklahoma artists Carter Sampson, Bo Jennings and some others uh, as well as some featured guest speakers. Uh, we reached out to a lot of legislators to get them to come. Uh, and the ones that are in town and available are the ones that are coming. Uh, and so it should be a really great environment. Uh, it's free. So it's a free event, open to the public, and it there's no charge to enter. We are taking donations to the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. Um, they are spending something like $25,000 a day supporting this walkout and supporting children that don't have access to food. And the food bank's a great organization anyway. Um, but they've had to really step up this week, and so uh, they're going to be there. We're going to be there doing voter registration, um, hopefully with a handout for those of you who might want to know about how to run for office. So some things to think about, not just the steps on what you got to do, but like things to consider, um, how it may impact parts of your life. We want we want everyone to feel empowered, but we want the ones that really feel like they are going to give this a good college try um, to like at least go into it more informed. So it should be a really great event. Um, teachers are welcome. There's going to be some special gifts for teachers, um, some free food and drink, and I think free t-shirts even. Yep. Um, so after a long week at the Capitol, we want everyone to feel like you got a couple hours just to relax um, and have a good time and maybe not have to hold your sign up. Although you can bring your sign if you'd like. I'm sure that's not a problem. It's going to be, it's going to be a good time. I really hope we see a lot of people there and um, really have an opportunity to say, you know, well done to the teachers and thanks for advocating for education in Oklahoma. See what see what's gonna happen next. Yeah. So then we go to Monday. Um, do you think teachers will be back? And if so, what are they gonna be talking about? I I really do. You know, I think that kind of to the, we talked about the mixed messaging. You know, I think that these are bills that are gonna pass tomorrow in the Senate, the online sales tax and uh, ball and dice gaming. It's not clear to me that that is going to be enough for this to be over. There's been some messaging from some of the leadership that maybe that's kind of what they're pushing towards. Um, the rank and file teachers that I've talked to today, and I've spoken with several from several districts, have all said to a person, to me, they're not they're not ready to go home. Um, additionally, I think it's instructive that there's already several things, there are several things scheduled for next week. There's a group of teachers from Edmond that are walking to the Capitol from the administration building that's gonna be on Monday. Um, the teachers that are walking from Tulsa are scheduled to arrive at the Capitol on Tuesday. Um, so I, it seems like there's a lot of teachers in several groups that are they're planning on staying through the rest of the week. In terms of what they're going to be focused on, uh, I'm not sure. You know, um, the capital gains bill is still out there. We've heard repeatedly that that's not on the table, um, but things can change. Um, so I think capital gains is possible. Um, I think income taxes are possible. I don't know 
If there will be legislative move on either one of those, but that could be a, could be a discussion. So. Yeah. What do you, what do you hear? Um, yeah, I think if if those two bills are passed, I suspect there are some people, maybe OEA, probably the leadership, uh, maybe in both parties, that are hoping that will be enough to maybe end this so they can get on with the business of the session otherwise. Um, but I think we may see some surprises next week. Um, we haven't heard anything about a wind tax in a few weeks. I suspect that might come up. Um, I've heard that there were some um, big dogs in town talking about that um, and whether or not that is taxes moving forward, like from today onward, or if they're trying to do something retroactive, will determine the response. And it could be really interesting, uh, just politically, um, if that comes out and they do a wind tax just for education, because then you might um, hit educators against legislators who have been supportive of them in other ways, and that um, could get tense, <laughs> to yes. say the least. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, and to be clear, when you're talking about taxes on wind, um, there's been talk about a gross production tax on wind, taxing wind energy um, at a set dollar amount for a megawatt hour of energy that wind produces, but there has also been talk about capping the, uh, zero, capping the zero emissions tax credits. These are tax credits that were, have been in place in Oklahoma for several years that renewable energy companies use and still use and have factored into their budgets for several years to come. Mm -hmm. And there's been talk about kind of going back and eliminating those deductions. And there are several uh, executives in the uh, wind sector that are not happy about that and are really kind of saying that would make Oklahoma a fairly toxic environment for business investment moving forward if the state government can't be trusted to kind of keep its word in terms of tax incentives. So that would be that be interesting. And then I think the last pivot that we haven't addressed yet and that gets lost in this conversation is what about public employees? Um, I know a number of them were there on Monday. Um, they didn't have snow days that they could give like schools did. Um, and I think they feel um, left out uh, in this conversation. Um, public employees haven't had a pay raise in a long time either. A pay raise has been passed, and it was very tiny, uh, like twelve hundred dollars. And so I know a lot of folks are appreciative of that, which comes out to roughly eighty bucks a month right. before taxes. Uh, and they obviously are hoping for more. Do you think there's a chance that this conversation pivots away from education and over, maybe over towards public employees at all, or do you think that ship has sailed? That's a really that's a great question. That's an interesting point. Um, I think it's going to be hard for it to pivot to public employees because there are not the numbers of them. They don't have they don't have the numbers, and like teachers, there are some contractual issues that limit their ability to have a work stoppage. Um, so I think as long as the teachers are there in the numbers that they're in now, I think adding public employees and kind of making them a bigger part of the discussion is possible. If the teachers go home, I find it hard to envision a scenario where. Everything, you know, the rally, the enthusiasm kind of continues, but in a way that's focused more on the employees. I think they have to be there together or almost not at all. That makes sense. So I think, and you know, there's some comments on the feed here of teachers saying they're not going to leave until education is fully funded. Um, and I really uh, encourage teachers to talk amongst yourselves, have the groups talk to one another. And I think maybe the best thing is to come up with some talking points about what that looks like and what that goal is. Um, I heard some teachers today that said they were hoping for 25 million, and I said, "Well, I know there's people across the rotunda that want 100 million, and that's a big gap." Uh, and so, if some of you are going to go home, it's going to hurt their argument, and it, ru it risks fracturing the education group as a whole. And right now, their powers are just standing together. So, I guess we'll see what happens moving into next week. No, I completely agree. I, you know, like the the folks that are saying we want to see education fully funded, that's great. But there needs to be a consensus on what that means. Is fully funded restoration of the 475 million that was originally in House Bill 1010 XX, or is fully funding is it 812 million that was in the original ask for the first year from OEA, or is fully funding 1.4 billion that was the package that OEA asked for over three years? What what number is fully funding education? Right. And again, not much discussion about what happened after this year. That fell off the conversation uh, about two weeks ago, I think. And, right. and so now we've got year one. What about years two and three? Mr. Mitchell, anything else you'd like to discuss? Well, some. Uh, you want to take some questions sure. from our sure. audience here? Scott Scribner says the hashtag to use is Okla Ed Walkout. Okay. 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 Noted. So 
Tisa Maltby. I hope I got that right. Big votes tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the end of uh, the somebody says the end of the strike. Let me ask you this. Let me guys uh, take your idea about this one. The public is with these folks right now. Agree? Yeah. Yes. They've been with them since the the hotel motel tax thing was spun out, not by the Republicans, <laughs> who. The, the nice way of saying is they mishandled how that was rolled out. Agree? Sure. Okay. Probably a week ago tomorrow night, they, that was a big old life preserver thrown out to the OEA the way it was handled. By the way, uh, 101, get your message out. If it's bad, you do it. Don't let somebody else do it. Right. <laughs> um, so the public's been with uh, teachers and educators. When do you think, how much longer do you think they have in terms of we're winning because you don't want to stay, you don't, you don't want to keep an old football player one day longer than right. they produce. Right. You don't want to stay on a walkout one day longer than you need to because the public can turn on you in a heartbeat. Your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, so I was at AutoZone today buying some new wiper blades in anticipation of some rain tomorrow. And a group of students walked by down 23rd Street and, um, and the employees said, oh man, they've gone too far. That's it up there. What are they chanting on here on 23rd? That's too much. And they weren't entirely serious. I, I kind of talked to them, but they were still positive about the walkout. But that was an indication to me that as this spreads, um, that, that you're exactly right. I think public opinion can flip in a heartbeat. Um, and what's going to start happening is as we move into next week, this the impact on parents and other businesses um, is going to have a bigger role. I was off work today to care for my son because his school is closed. Um, and we're going to start seeing more of that. And once the business community gets in, right. I think they're going to be the voices that may start nudging lawmakers one direction or another. No, I, I totally agree. And this is why the messaging, this is why the messaging information is so important. I think they can actually hold the public for a while, provided that they're speaking with one voice. That we need this number, we need this much funding, and here's why. I think that's a message that the public can understand, and I think it's a message that the public wants to understand. I don't know anybody in Oklahoma that doesn't want to fund a good ed education system. I know a lot of people that don't know what that takes. Right. They don't know what it takes in terms of taxes. They don't know what it takes in terms of money. They don't know where that money should go. So I think as much as the teachers can do a good job of educating the public, here's how much we need and here's where it should come from, and we're not going home until we get it, I think they can hold the public for a while. Maybe. Let me give you an example of an optical nightmare. Monday is senior day at the Capitol. <laughs> He's smelling what the rock is cooking here. <laughs> so usually about a thousand seniors show up at the Capitol and go talk to their legislators. Can you just imagine the optics of 80 year olds trying to get up and down those stairs and not being able to? So there are going to be some bumps in the road coming for this issue. There's one right there. We'll right. see how that's being handled. Probably folks haven't sat down to think that one through. That's right. Monday. That's an eternity, right? right, in terms of these issues. Yeah, I think um, having the seniors there could go either way, right? right? Like, there's a lot of seniors that are retired teachers who are strong advocates for public schools. Um, there are probably some that are tired of these young people um, and teachers that are not working. They grew up in a different era. This is a different thing. Uh, my personal recommendation would be that the education folks who are there on Monday need to figure out how to how to make this a joint effort some kind of a you know step out for seniors where they get out of the way maybe right. they've been in the capital the last couple of days maybe pull it out and go back outside on monday let the seniors in have their message rally behind them be extra nice and like um, talk to them and have those conversations and find out what they care about as well like with most things in government there's some overlap between these issues that could be really powerful to both groups that's the step up. That's exactly what I was going to say. Was pull out of the Capitol, let them have that day. You know, say we we've been here all last week. We're going to be here tomorrow. Uh, this is your day. We're going to be outside. We're going to be chanting. We're going to be waving our signs. But we'll make sure that there's a path for you to get through. We'll make sure that we're not taking up all the inside bathrooms, taking up all the space along the walls. We we'll let the seniors advocate and then get back to work. And that's the other thing that there's been other events this week at the Capitol that have either canceled or been bumped. Uh, Monday was Autism Day at the Capitol. It was World Autism Day. And I don't even know if they ended up holding their events. Next Wednesday is Oklahoma Arts Day at the Capitol. Um, I know they're watching this carefully as well, knowing that funding arts and education is a big part of what they uh, advocate for. Um, and so trying to find ways to partner up. But a lot of these events are planned 
months or years in advance um, and they have you know guests and stuff coming in and they, it's important to every group and so trying to find ways for the uh, the intersectionality of some of these issues to come together is going to be key to success for everybody let's take a few a uh, few more david greggs our buddy at flying pig with no specified goal in sight it's hard to know when we get there he also says p.s get off my yard no, i'm just kidding <laughs> just kidding david's much much younger than me mike means hi mike Teachers kept education at the forefront with this, and that is a win. That's true. Yeah, definitely. Darren Freund, OEA needs to stand strong and not cave in. Some of their comments from today make me think if bills are passed Friday, they will end strike. And uh, Tisa Maltby says, counters with OEA doesn't decide what I do. So a lot of interesting opinions, and um, still sounds like the folks are still with them, and they're still strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we talked about that earlier before we started recording, that, um, that OEA is a diverse group, that they were right. there are teachers that are all across the political spectrum, and so they um, aren't all going to agree. There's probably some that have said, you know what, this is pretty great so far, let's go home. Right. And there's some that are saying, no, push for more, let's go all the way, you know, never give up, never surrender, and you can't do both. Right. No, I think that, I mean, I think that's, you have the nail on the head. There's, I think there are some teachers that are, ready to kind of say, hey, we fought the good fight, we've got some funding for our kids, we're, you know, we've restored the 50 million, and that gives other teachers that are like, I don't know what 50 million you're talking about, um, my number is 812, mm -hmm. um, so it'll be in interesting to see kind of how large each group is. Yeah, I don't envy the position of David Duvall, <laughs> no. or Alicia Priest, no. uh, or anyone that works <laughs> in right. the, at the Capitol right now. Um, I think, you know, for, for Let's Fix This, I think our celebration in all of this regardless of specific numbers or issues is that there are 25,000 people who are super engaged and at the Capitol and uh, you know we do a we do a day at the Capitol every month um, our next one is on April 26th I hope for all of our well-being that the teacher walkout isn't still going on by the end of this month um, but we would love to have a big crowd come on April 26th and join us for another Capitol day to talk about whatever your issue is whatever is most important to you education or otherwise um, and that I hope this energy, this engagement persists into the summer, through the summer primaries in June, into the elections in November. Could you take just a moment uh, in our few minutes left to talk about Let's Fix This, some of your board members, what you're trying to get done, um, and what people ought to know? Sure. Uh, I'd love to, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we are a, a grassroots nonprofit organization, and we try really hard to be nonpartisan. Um, and it's tough because issues get polarized one way or the other. Um, things like education, that I think everyone really agrees that education is a nonpartisan issue. This, kids don't care, this is a big deal. Um, ends up getting polarized one way or the other, and that's, that's a shame in lots of ways. Um, what we want to do is to help people get engaged however they can. Um, we try to take the complicated political wonkiness of things um, and kind of distill it down so that it is more approachable to everybody. Um, and so, you know, sometimes changing little words from revenue to taxes, you know, makes sense. Even We don't want to oversimplify it, but try to make it more approachable and to do some explanations um, for things and, and help people figure out how they can get involved and let them know that it's not scary. You know, one of the first things we did was Capital Days and tried to show people that the Capitol is not an intimidating building. Right. It's the people's house, we can all get there, here's where the bathrooms are, here's where the offices are, we'll go with you to people's offices and help you meet and build relationships with your legislators. And that's great. I say often, I was walking through Target the other day and uh, a legislator said hello to me because um, I used to live in her district and she knows me and that changes the dynamic. I know, I've gotten to know some of them personally, they've gotten to know me, and when they're not just a face and a name, it's hard to vilify them on, on things. And, um, and so it's exciting to see people get in engaged. And so many teachers there this week didn't know who the legislators are, and now they do. Now they know who they are, where they live. Um, and, and they, in some cases, know that they don't have an opponent. And so they're trying to... Uh, in about half the cases, as it turns out. Right, yeah. Um, trying to get involved and maybe even consider running for office. And so they've really had a crash course um, in civics this week that I think is much needed in our state and in our country. And we look forward um, this summer, kind of in the summers when we look forward to the next year, um, and we're going to have some openings in our schedule and really try to pivot towards 
doing more education and engagement as we move towards November. We've got a lot of state questions that are on the ballot again this year. We want people to understand what those are before they ever get there. We want people to register to vote and to turn out to vote because uh, that has been an area that um, Oklahoma doesn't do so great on. Yeah. Scott is our vice president of our board. I'm going to let him say a few words as well. No, I just would echo everything that you said, and especially those those last couple of points. One, that you know, going to the Capitol One is a lot of fun. Um, meeting your legislator, your state representative, or your senator is a lot of fun. And it's it's great because you find out that they are, in many ways, they're just like you. You know, they have, many of them have a full-time job that they do outside of the legislature. Um, many of them you have similar backgrounds. They're, they're just people, you know. They're not, they're not impossible to talk to. They're not, um, you know, kind of like, Pretentious and kind of the, the vision that I had of legislators before I started going to the Capitol. The the second thing that I would say is kind of picking up where, where Andy left off was how important it is to vote. Um, we've had several special elections in Oklahoma recently. Uh, most recently, we had an election for one of the districts that's a little bit south of here. It represents thirty seven thousand people in the House. Um, the total number of people who voted in that election was under two thousand um, for for a district that represents thirty seven thousand people and. You know that those numbers they don't make the they don't make the election illegitimate. They don't mean that it's not a real victory. They don't mean it's not a real loss. It just means that there's 35,000 people in that district who are going to be represented for the next two years by someone that they didn't have a hand in choosing. And you know if you're unhappy with the state of things at the Capitol, no matter what party, no matter what your issue is, the the single best thing that you can do is get out and vote and encourage other people to vote with you. Advocacy is great. <laughs> We hope as many people as possible do it. That's what we're that's what we're all about. Um, but the ballot box is where change ultimately happens. And so I um, think that with uh, let's fix this up in the summer and into the fall, we're going to be doing a lot of voter registration and hopefully a lot of voter education and try and get as many people to the ballot box in November as we can. Yeah. So I, so uh, one of the reminder again tomorrow Friday night at the Tower Theater we're hosting the Walkout Rockout. Um, our co-hosting the Walkout Rockout. Have some uh, local musicians playing some really great music, a lot of good Woody Guthrie covers, um, some really great speakers, uh, free food, drinks, and t-shirts for teachers, and we're raising money for the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. We'd love for you to come. We'll have a table there. We'll be doing voter registration. Um, I'll be there. Scott will be there. Um, a whole bunch of people. Um, and if you're interested in running for office, or if you have questions about specific issues, come and chat, and we will share as much as we know. And if we don't know, we'll find out together, right? That's kind of how we do this. Absolutely. Um, and then you can find out more about our organization on our website, letsfixthisok.org. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. Thanks to you guys for coming in and doing this today. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for staying off my lawn. <laughs> also, a reminder to please follow Scott Mitchell on Twitter at Mitchell Talks and the News 9 News on 6. Mitchell Talks Facebook page, we are, the week is not over. They're going to be in session tomorrow. And that means, a little programming alert, we will not be taping Hot Seat or Your Vote Counts tomorrow on Fridays we used to do, and with the Facebook Live, because there's action at the Capitol. Meaning, we're going to be live Saturday on Hot Seat. We'll be live Your Vote Counts with Representative Eccles in Dunnington. You see Representative Eccles, have him give me a call. Uh, Representative Dunnington will be at the uh, event tomorrow night, Tower. Yeah, we'll see you all. And perhaps even Representative Eccles may have to send a trooper I, I, to get, <laughs> have, their, have a little your vote count Friday night at Tower Theater. Meanwhile, thanks to Scott Melson. Thanks to Andy Moore. Stay with us. Thanks to News 9, News 1, 6. We'll be back from Camps 1910 tomorrow with more updates. Josh Delosier, I teach in Bethany, Oklahoma. Amy Young at 612 in the Paseo Arts District. Super. So we're here at the state capitol for the first day of the teacher walkout. Josh, what do you hope is going to happen today? You know, what I really hope is that the legislators realize that, you know, we're here and we're committed to this cause. Uh, you know, there's a lot of push for this one-day walkout, and I really hope that the teachers continue to come out, the parents continue to come out, the business community members continue to come out and support this long term until we get a fix, until we get uh, you know, the, the requests that the OEA is asking for. 
So I've heard that from several teachers today. I, a lot of folks feel like it's going to take more than just one day. That sounds like you feel that way as well. Yeah, I think so. You know, if I was sitting up in the legislature and looking out, if somebody's here for one day, that's not a whole lot of incentive for me to, to have action. But if they come back day and day and day and they show their commitment, then that's really hard to ignore. Sure. Amy, what about you? Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, we're going to have to put pressure on our legislature for many days, weeks, could even take months for them to realize that this is an issue that's not going to go away. And in fact, I think the effects are going to multiply, and we've seen that already um, over the past two decades. As a public school teacher myself that taught for eight years in Norman Public Schools, we started seeing the effects of these cuts and unfunded mandates, and um, it, the kids are the ones that lose, and it's despicable what we're doing to them now. Oh, this is, uh, this is all fascinating. It is, isn't it? Yes. Okay, okay. I got it fixed. Here. Okay. okay. Switch that. Okay. It's always something. Right. Um, how do, I'm going to start with you, Amy. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the revenue package and the pay raises that were passed last week by the state legislature? I think it's a start, but I don't think it's an ending place by any means. If they're not going to fund the raises for the following years, it's just for one year, that's not a raise. That's a bonus. They'll still have to pay taxes on all of that as well. Um, and I just, I, it doesn't fund what the kids need in the classroom. We've got a long way to go. But I have to say, on one positive note, for anyone, any of the legislators in our state to agree to raise taxes at all is an accomplishment. So I am grateful for that, but we need to do more. Josh, is there anything, any particular bills or anything that you've heard about that you think would be a good source for additional revenue that you think would be palpable to all these teachers out here? Mm. Um, you know, honestly, I haven't heard any good options for that. Um, the you must do better. what's it called? The 1023XX, the the Senate bill that came back through. Uh, you know, the, the idea that we're going to have both unfunded mandates and where they're pulling funding from other sources temporarily and then putting those fu that funding back into those sources after year one is the big concern for me uh, because what will end up happening is that teachers, classroom teachers and schools will become the villain at that point because they will say, well, we can't fund your services because we had to fund teacher pay raises and you know school uh, funding. And so that's my biggest concern with the package that's come through this so far. So you're worried that they're going to try to vilify teachers by saying what you need, you're saying what you need matters more than other state services? Essentially, yes, because while they came out this one year and said, we want to fund you, if they pull that funding, then it's either us or them. And so you're pitting two state agencies who are both working for the good of the community against each other for the same dollars. Sure. And uh, Amy, you and I were talking about the public employees a little while ago that are here, and you said uh, a phrase I thought was interesting, that it's really all about the children either way. Yeah, I mean, it's for the children, it's for the people of Oklahoma, um, mental health, DHS, education, it's all for everyone. You know, these kids that we're talking about right now become the adults of Oklahoma, and they're the ones that are going to have to take care of us in the future and figure out solutions to these problems. And goodness, if we don't give them a good education, we don't have mental health services, how are they ever going to do that? And our state will continue to decline and decline and decline to where people are not going to want to live here anymore. People are already leaving. Even in the preschool that I started, I have two families that are moving to Colorado at the end of this year. They're just sticking around until the end of the school year because they want their kids to finish out the year with their classmates. It's sad. And I think we have so many wonderful people in this state. And that's the best part about Oklahoma, is uh, the kindness and generosity of these people. We want to keep them here. I agree. All right, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. My name is Elizabeth Sidler, and I work with Generation Citizen, a civics education nonprofit. 
Um, so we've got to do some work with Generation Citizen off and on over the last couple of years. Uh, you're here at the Capitol today for presumably the teachers rally. Um, what are your observations about what's going on this week? Well, from a student voice perspective, it's been interesting how few students I feel that I've seen. And most of the students that I've seen are elementary students who are here with their parents. And so um, the high school students that we have seen and that we have gotten to work with, it's been fun organizing them. Uh, Gabrielle Davis, we got to work with her to help organize the student demonstration yesterday and all of those student speeches. And that was really exciting and riveting. And some of the best rhetoric that I've heard come out of a microphone um, this week was from students. And that was really, really exciting. But I think the combination of tactics of physical presence and you know, voice and actual sound with, combined with people going door to door, standing in line to meet with their senators and representatives. That combination of tactics, I think, is proving effective slowly but surely. Okay, so that's interesting that you've noticed uh, fewer students than maybe some would expect, and maybe that makes sense that it's for teachers. There's been a lot of press about students and their involvement in yesterday's demonstration. Um, what would you like to see from high school students in case we happen to have any who listen to this podcast? I, from high school students, I would like to see them doing more of exactly what I saw yesterday, which is stepping in front of cameras and asking, are you interviewing people? I'd like to be interviewed. I have something to say. Um, and taking the experiences that they have from the classroom, because we have teachers here who have been chanting for days that they're here for their kids. And so I also want to hear from those kids that they know that both they and teachers make education possible collaboratively. And so I want to hear their experiences as well, especially older students who have seen in their lifetime the decreasing funding and what that means. Um, and I'd like to hear from more uh, urban school students um, and rural school students. We've heard from a lot of suburban folks. Um, and so a variety of student voice would be great. So if anyone's out there, speak up. <laughs> That's a really good distinction too that I think often we hear about the urban rural divide but particularly with schools there is a third group of suburban schools that are that are different and that's kind of the schools that I, mean, that I grew up with and I think about and that's they have very different issues and challenges than, than urban and rural schools may face. What do you guys with Generation Citizen um, are you doing anything special during this rally or anything coming up that you want to talk about? We mostly have been attempting to provide infrastructure support and sort of bridges of communication for students who want to organize themselves. So we haven't organized anything. We've just provided support for um, especially the Facebook group, uh, Student Voices for Education. And so I would say stay tuned to that Facebook page for updates. I know that they are organizing a student demonstration again on Monday for more of a sit-in style in the gallery. That's their plan. Super. And um, so I know a lot about Generation Citizen, but for those who want to learn more, get involved, where can they find more information? You can find us at generationcitizen.org or at GenCitizen on Twitter. Super. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Amelia Bond, senior at Edmund Memorial High School. Jonathan Curtis, senior at Edmund Memorial High School. Sarah Tuttle, senior at Edmund Memorial High School. Maggie Mitchell, senior at Edmund Memorial High School. I should have guessed that you were all from Edmund Memorial. Do you know Mr. Kalaki? Yes. yes. All right. Good. AP Research. Right, right. Oh, were you? Super. Okay, so uh, Ray, Mr. Kalaki, and my fiance have been friends for like 20 years, like since college. And so, uh, yeah, super excited. I am. Thank you. Yes. So um, thank you. This is not about me. But we're here for you guys. Um, so, um, have you guys been at the Capitol all this week? Yes. Okay. Um, let me just get your impressions of how it's been, what your experience has been at the Capitol. Whomever wants to go first. I can go first. I, at first, was very excited to be at the Capitol and seeing all my teachers and my friends be so passionate about such an important issue that's facing our state and slowly I've become more distraught with our legislators and their just complacency towards the whole issue and how they have basically no intention to fix the problem until the six days are up. Um, but I am so excited to see how many people are there and continue to show up even though it's the fourth day. I thought it'd peter out by now but I'm very inspired. 
So I think when I first came to the Capitol, I was super excited. I planned to be a poli sci major uh, in college, and I, so I was really excited to like see a bunch of people like as passionate about politics as I am, uh, like just surround me. But honestly, as the time has gone on, like it's it's kind of exhausting, you know, being there every day, and it's cold, and it's it's just it's annoying because our legislators don't they they're trying to wait us out, and they don't understand that where we can't be waited out like it's it's not something that they can just hold off we will be here I saw a uh, poster that said teachers have great patience so yeah suck that I guess uh, you know there was rumors earlier this week that they were turning off the water in the Capitol so the teachers couldn't go to the bathroom and they're closing the hallways too. which is first of all bogus because there's a hundred bathrooms like right outside yeah, yeah. and so like that that rumor doesn't even hold water also the Capitol has terrible water pressure yeah. every day so um, so you both mentioned something about the change in your view during this week and, and how it's um, how it's progressed and maybe become more distraught. Um, what do you th- what do you think it's going to take to end the walkout? I think it'll take us actually being here whenever like we don't have snow days to give. So like Wednesday is basically the day that we don't have any more days to give, and it's important that we're still here and. That's, that will be the real test if we're all here still on Wednesday and if we can actually sacrifice our days and be willing to go into June possibly if we have to. So I think it's going to have to take just grit and strength and, and for, persi- Sorry. No, persistence. That's all I was going to say. Uh, for us seniors, our graduation stays the same. We don't, we don't change. Um, but we still have to, we don't have enough absences. Like even if you've had perfect attendance uh, your entire second semester, you don't have enough absences to burn to not come back after graduation. So for us, um, you know, it, it is, I don't, I don't want to say it like this, it is, it is a sacrifice for us to be at the Capitol because we're, we're taking days that we could be, you know, completely out of high school and we're, we're staying into June instead because this is a problem that we see. It, like, it has to be fixed and the legislators aren't going to get it if it's just, oh, days that they don't have to come because they didn't have enough snow days or whatever. Yeah, um, I know that I am, like, continuing to come here because I have a brother who is going to be growing up in... Um, Edmund and still going to school here and I don't want him to, his class sizes to get like bigger and bigger and bigger and over my education I've seen my class sizes slowly grow and I don't want to say that my education is like kind of taken a hit but it's definitely not been the quality it was when I was little or when I could have one-on-one relationships with every single one of my teachers and be like teacher's pet with like all of them um, because I love making relationships with those people because they are absolutely amazing people and they deserve the world. And I want my brother to be able to have those sort of relationships and have a great education. And I want to see what he, he wants to be a chemist. And I want him to like be able to grow up and actually do that. But if it turns out that he can't find a decent chemistry teacher to like connect with and have a class that's small enough where he can make those like connections, I, that would absolutely break my heart. Sure. I mean, I think everyone remembers a teacher they had that had a big impact on their lives, something they connected with, even if it's a subject that you didn't really care about. Um, like, I had a really great physics teacher in high school. I didn't, wasn't particularly interested in it, but he made it better, and yeah. I certainly learned more because of that. I was more vested in the, in the class. Yeah. So you mentioned that you think that the, uh, the walkout will end once it is actually hurting teachers. For a way to... And that would just be the true test for us. Okay. Exactly. And then I think especially because parents will start getting mad because then we'll start cutting into vacations and even summer school at that point. I think that I think Edmund actually made an announcement that we're going to add minutes to the day rather than days. Um, but still, I think parents are going to be like, wait a minute. I want my kid to not be in school forever. And that's whenever the crap's going to hit the fan and the, our legislators are going to have to actually get to work at some point. So what kind of conversations have you all been having with your parents about what's going on at the Capitol? <laughs> My mom is a speech pathologist with Edmond Public Schools, so uh, she's been up there with me. Um, and I mean, we both wholeheartedly support it. It's not, and like for me, I, I don't, I'm not going to mind going into summer if like that, if that's what it takes. If we don't add minutes to the day, it's it's not an issue for me personally. But I, I could see why parents and you know, faculty are getting upset because they've they've planned out their year and they they didn't plan for this and I, I understand their frustration. Well, yeah. and my mom is also a teacher at Edmond Public School. She teaches AP United States and AP World History at Edmond Memorial, and she has expressed that she 
so on. Oh, she teaches a she does AP summer institutes. So in the summertime, that's where she makes most of her income, and so that's really going to start hurting her in her classes because she's not going to be there. She's going to take those days off as personal days to make the two thousand dollars she can make in a week rather than in a month at Edmond schools. So. Um, she's definitely for it, and my whole family has just been amazing about it and driven me to the Capitol. My stepdad has even taken off of work to help us protest, so I'm just really inspired by the whole communal effort, for my family at least. Have you, have any of you received any, like, maybe, you talked a lot about support. Have you had anyone that was on the opposite side? Well, <laughs> apparently on Twitter, when they saw our student rally, they called us pesky kids or, um, tools of the left who's they um just twitter trolls <laughs> when they see like um on the cnn live post on facebook they were commenting a whole bunch about how we were just being tools of our teachers that we weren't actually speaking our opinion that we were just being told to say this and that we weren't actually this wasn't our own voice and i thought that was really ridiculous <laughs> yeah because i mean i'm using the skills that my teachers taught me to speak out for them <laughs> Because this is about them as much as as it's as it's about us, so oh, I have definitely. To say, yeah. I've had some lashback. I work at Cracker Barrel in the evenings, and so last night I was at work and I was very tired, exhausted from being at the Capitol the past three days. And I had some of my coworkers mention, "I'm so against teach like this teacher walkout, like my kids and all this stuff." And I think it just comes from a place of misunderstanding and maybe almost ignorance of not knowing the whole situation of what's going on and how in how this is going to impact not only their kids right now, but future generations. Now Oklahoma's just become, become like barren. We're going to have nobody here anymore. My mother made a sign that said Amazon's new headquarters wasn't even looking here because who wants to come to Oklahoma where we don't have any educated people to work for them? Yeah, so the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce um, did an interview with News 9 the other day, uh, and they talked about that, that the thing that they see, that they hear from businesses who want to uh, expand or open new offices is the quality of life in, a, in an area and so th places like Oklahoma City or Tulsa that have lots of um, good things to offer may drop off that list because if, if the quality of education drops just because we have cheap fuel doesn't mean that that's an uh, end-all be-all exactly. yeah. yeah. so you mentioned that misunderstanding there um, how do we bridge that gap how do we help those that have a misunderstanding how do we help them understand I would encourage them to come to the Capitol. <laughs> You'll learn a lot more if you're actually with us and trying to help support teachers. And if you personally don't, I encourage you to do research on teacher pay or to see like how many budget cuts we've had to education and that we're not just greedy. Our teachers aren't just greedy for money. We're one of the lowest, 49th or 50th, I believe now, in teacher pay. Exactly. So I think that's a reason to call your government out and try to protest it and to get a teacher. Yeah. And I would even say to have measured conversations and not get so aggressive whenever you're speaking to people who may have different viewpoints on how to exactly fix the issue. Um, because one of the superintendents of the school is like, how can we bridge this gap between like everybody who wants to come together and just help fund education? And there are a lot of like people like raise taxes, consolidate small school districts, and it's just having an open conversation and not being so quick to lash back at other people's beliefs and staying away from like Twitter trolls and crazy yeah. memes on Facebook that are just one or two words that demonize a whole group of people and really right. being open to listening to others, I think. It's really hard though, right? Because oh, those yeah. things are oh, easy yeah. to share and so it's yeah. tough to like, I mean, for us, I, you know, people respond to things that we post and I want to like have a conversation with everybody and you realize you can't have an actual conversation with everyone. You can try, but some of those may not be successful. Yeah. Um, so what's, uh, maybe from each of you this time, what's the one thing that, like the one lesson or the, the thing you've learned the most from being at the Capitol this week? Um, okay. All right. There is strength in numbers. <laughs> yes. They see us out there, there's 30,000 plus people out there marching around the Capitol, going into the Capitol. We are not leaving. As long as we continue to have the same amount of people there, they will see that we're not going to go. So I think strength in numbers and just persistence is what's going to... I've seen a... That's what I learned. Um, 
it's kind of like restored my faith in humanity kind of um everyone who is at the capitol like protesting and marching and the teachers that are walking out they're all so supportive of everyone and like you walk around and they're like do you need water do you need snacks do you need sunscreen like is there anything that i can do for you and i'm like oh my gosh you're so kind and like open-hearted and willing to serve people and I think if the legislators actually came out and just like kind of went undercover boss a little bit and just walked around, they would have a complete different like view of yeah, what's going on because kind. you like see the people as people instead of just numbers on a page. So if they could all like put on some like blue jeans and a ball cap yeah, and just yeah. mingle yeah. amongst the commoners, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. I saw some representatives out there talking to them. And the people like, who have actually yeah. supported the Yeah, the and I think that's incredibly important out. to come out and listen to the people. That's your job is to come to, like represent the people yeah. and to work on public opinion and not to like, yeah. follow the agenda of lobbyists. Well, even yesterday I was talking people. to my representative, Senator Sharp, and he was incredible incredible willing to listen and everything but then 15 minutes into our conversation his secretary came in and was like okay you have to eat now and then me and my group were shoved out of his office and that's nobody's fault I don't want to paint a bad picture of him at all because he has so many people he needs to meet with but at the same time I just wish that they would be more willing to come out and talk to us individually and not just sit in their offices all day. It's really tough. So each house rep has 38,500 people in their district. Um, and even if you picked 10 a day, you're never going to get them all, you know. And so um, this morning I went to my representative's office and it was too full to get in. I just saw through the crack when someone came out. And so it's like, I'll, I know him. I'll text him later and um, say thanks for your hard work. Um, and if nothing else, I want to tell his assistant, like, hey, thanks for being cool and accommodating to a bajillion strangers that have been up there. Uh -huh. I am really thankful for the Highway Patrol. Yeah. <laughs> they have yeah. been keeping us safe. They've been keeping the entire thing orderly. I just yep. want to say thank you to them. Right. Anything else you guys want to add about anything at all? I just want all? to shout out Western Heights teachers oh, and the yeah. students who have been coming out. I think that's just incredible because, you know, their school board didn't really support them. And I just, whenever their bus was pulling in today and every teacher was standing and just applauding them, I think that's just so incredible. And I just really want Western Heights to know how amazing and inspiring they're being to everybody else. Um, to students, your voice matters. Yes. <laughs> yes, they will hear you. I would say like since the Parkland shooting, we've had like a revival in young people leading movements. Most definitely. And I think this is a good time for young people to come back onto the stage and to use their voice to make change. Yeah. I may use that as our cold open for this episode. That's good. Here comes my buddy Scott walking in. Hey. I'm interviewing some high school students. These are all seniors at Edmund Memorial. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. Class of 2002. Nice. I was say he's, a, he's an alumni. Oh, wow. And you're still alive. Uh, I was two years old. I was two years old. I hope you feel old. Uh, yeah, I was, any of you guys in APOS history? Yes. Greg Oppel? Oh, Greg Oppel. Oh, he's our best teacher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he was my APOS teacher. I was Facebooking with him. What a man. Oh what a what a I, I thought maybe he's just a statue now, that a testament to he was alive when you were a child. Yeah. Well, he called me middle-aged. So. Oh, yeah. Harsh. Well, are you middle-aged? That's the real question. Uh, Define so middle. I prefer not to answer that. All right. <laughs> Only if I die when I'm 70. Um, I did have one other question. Uh, how has your experiences this week shaped how involved you'll be moving forward in voting and considering running for public office? Anything that's about being civically engaged? Um, well, I've always wanted to be a poli-sci major, so that's actually being solidified by doing this. And also, I'm learning which days we're having votes and state questions and all that, so I'll be there to vote on the state questions and to vote for new senators and representatives. And the Democratic primary is coming up in June, so I'll be there for that. I'm learning voting dates, that's what I would say. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Anything else? That's pretty much what I would Everyone's say. Saying, right. Super. All right. Hey, thank you guys so much. Thank no you. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. Remember, you can connect with us on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Fix This OK. Scott is at SC Melson and Andy is at Andy OKC. You can also like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Let's Fix This OK. Our website is Let's Fix This OK.org. And there you can sign up for our newsletter, read our blog, find resources and details about upcoming events. 
Our podcast is edited and produced by Scott and me. And Let's Fix This is a member of the Mostly Harmless Media Network. Our theme music is generously provided by the Sugar Free All Stars. Let's Fix This is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization who strives to educate and equip all Oklahomans to engage with their government. We encourage you to get involved in any way that you can. And remember, decisions are made by those who show up.